the Country Club de Bogota, Bogota, Colombia, an exacting layout in the Colombian Andes, one of the highest golf courses in the world. A match over 18 holes between Miguel Sala, two-time Colombian Open champion, eight times a member of Colombia's Canada Cup team and winner of more than 30 other Opens in South America, and top U.S. professional, Julius Burroughs, twice holder of the most coveted title in golf, the United States Golf Association Open Championship. To analyze today's match, the legendary Gene Saracen, winner of every major title in golf. I'm George Rogers on the scene here in Bogota, and this is Shell's Wonderful World of Golf, a series of international matches played on the world's most famous golf courses, this week, the Country Club de Bogota, Bogota, Colombia, South America. Colombia, whose coastline is bathed by both the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, has been the gateway to South America since the days of the Spanish conquistadores. Bogota, her capital, a diverse city of nearly a million and a half people, is one of the oldest cities on the American continent. Situated 8,500 feet high on a broad sabana or plateau, it is nestled among the storied Andes Mountains. Here, where old Spanish hacienda-style buildings mingle indiscriminately with ultra-modern edifices, her past parades by the present as nonchalantly as a villager leading her borough to market in the city. Gleaming buildings inside which a nation's economy is being run serve as inadvertent backdrops to a system of trade that goes back before the invention of money. For blocks on end, colorful displays can be seen in the very heart of the city, and shoppers are enticed by the most commonplace items, as well as by some of the more unusual. In Colombia, ponchos, or ruanas as they are called, are regarded as proper attire at any time of the day, and they are worn by Colombians of all faces, callings, and gender. The riches that first lured the Spanish to Colombia were her precious stones and valuable metals, such as this solid gold conch shell. These priceless tribal relics were hammered out of pure gold by the Colombian Indians as long ago as 300 years before Christ. Emeralds big enough to please the noblest of the conquistadores remain among the most dazzling prizes in Colombia today. Long before the coming of the Spaniards, the Indians mined salt in the one-time capital of Sipaquira, about 30 miles from Bogota. And it is here, a half mile deep inside the ebony darkness of a 2,000-year-old salt mine, that this awe-inspiring cathedral of salt stands. Carved out of rock-hard walls of natural salt by local miners who completed the job in 1952, it is believed to be the world's largest church, capable of holding 10,000 people. El Libertador is how Colombians refer to Simon Bolivar, the fiery leader of armies who brought about freedom for Colombia and other Latin American countries, and who resided in this very house in Bogota when he was elected Colombia's first president. Now a national shrine, it attracts thousands of visitors who come to view his treasured personal effects. The elaborate changing of the guard that takes place every day in front of the presidential palace is a distant echo of that military age of a century ago. Today, the Country Club de Bogota, located just a few miles from the main business district, reflects a society which provides far more leisure time. One of the most sports-oriented clubs in South America, it offers a brace of championship tennis courts among its wide range of facilities as well as a glass-encased heated Olympic swimming pool where all the family can splash around, bowling alleys for the tireless teenagers, and a fully equipped playground for energetic youngsters whose parents might be wrestling par on the club's two well-groomed and challenging 18-hole golf courses, the East Course, and the scene of today's match, the West Course. Here on the spacious practice grounds at the Country Club de Bogota, we're uh, watching our two players tune up for today's match. Gene, I know Miguel Salas certainly no stranger to you. 
Yes, George, as a matter of fact, I watched him play in the Masters back in 1960. I was impressed with him then, and I'm very impressed with him now. He has a very upright three-quarter swing that's a little on the fast side. I want you to notice his left arm. It's as straight as a string, and he knows where that club head is every second. Just by way of contrast, there's certainly nothing very fast about Julius Burroughs. This way. <laughs> no, George, that swing is like the big fellow himself, slow and easy. You know, he never allows anything to upset the tempo of his game. But don't let that slow backswing fool you. When he gets down in that hitting area, his hands are a blur, and he knocks that ball clear out of sight. You know, Gene, I'm always extremely interested in getting the foreign players' reaction to the uh, Masters tournament. Miguel? You made that trip up to Georgia three times now. What do you think of the Augusta National? Oh, George, this is one of the great golf courses. Uh, but one of the, my great pleasures is when I can see a champion like Gene Salson. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Julius, I bet you never played golf at this altitude before. Uh, no, Gene, at, uh, certainly at 8,500 8, feet, it's like playing in an airplane. But you do get a good deal more distance because of the thin air. Well, you're going to need that because, as you know, they got a couple of par four holes here. They're 460 yards plus. The greens go like that. They'll drive you a little bit crazy, so I'm sure you want to warm those putters up, huh? Gene, maybe you could uh, pass along a few impressions of the course while I drop the fellows by the putting green. Glad to, George. You know, I would never believe you could go 8,500 feet up in the Andes and find a golf course as flat as a tabletop. But that didn't stop the designer from making this one a tough test of golf. This is a real tee shot course, and almost every hole is a dog leg. I've seen tight fairways before, but some of the spots where you have to play your second shot from are so narrow, you can cover them with one of those ponchos they wear around here. Man-made lagoons run around some of the fairways, and if the ducks could talk, they could tell you where you'd find an awful lot of golf balls. Just get a load of some of these bunkers sticking out in the fairways. They're all so deep, there isn't one you can run a putter out of. About the only thing that's not flat on this course are the greens, which are elevated so you can see them from the fairway. Some of them have two and three levels, and boy, if you ever overclub yourself, it's over the ledge for you. Here on the first tee, we'd like to remind you that our players are competing for a total of $5,000 in prize money, $3,000 to the winner, $2,000 to the loser. And in the event of a tie, of course, the money will be equally divided, $2,500 apiece. Our players are going over the local rules with our referee for today's match, Alvaro Gomez. He is the former Columbia National Amateur Champion. And we might pass along this information. Junius Burroughs will be playing the larger American ball. And so for that matter, will Miguel Sala, because he says he likes the way it plays around the green a bit better. Under the rules of the Royal and Ancient Golf Club of St. Andrews, Scotland, which are followed here in Columbia, a player, as you know, has the choice of playing the larger American ball or the smaller British ball. Our match today is uh, 18 holes medal play under, to repeat, the rules of the Royal and Ancient Golf Club of St. Andrews, Scotland. I see that uh, Gene has joined our scorekeeper for today, a member of the club, quite an avid golf fan, Senorita Marta Lobo Guerrero. Now it looks as though they're just about ready for the toss of the coin. The coin has been tossed, called, and won by Julius Burroughs, and he will drive first. This first hole, a par four of 433 yards, presents an extremely tight opening tee shot. Out of bounds on the left forces you to keep your drive to the right. At about 300 yards out, the fairway narrows to less than 40 yards across, and it's dogleg slightly to the right by that small eucalyptus tree. You play to a beautifully contoured elevated green that's guarded on the left and right by deep bunkers and falls away sharply in the rear. Now here is Big Julius Burroughs, a native of Fairfield, Connecticut, currently resident of uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, representing the Mid Pines Golf Club, Southern Pines, North Carolina. And Julius has hit his first tee shot of the match absolutely straight away, right down the heart of the fairway on this very narrow fairway, a perfect opening tee shot. He must be out there a good uh, 265 or 70 yards. Now, Miguel Sala, a teaching pro from the Los Lagartos Golf Club in Bogota, born in Buenos Aires, actually an Argentinian by birth, but he's been here in Colombia some 13 years. He turned pro in 1947 and eight times has represented Colombia in the Canada Cup. Five, ten, 150 pounds. And Miguel Sala has also hit his opening tee shot straight away, a little bit farther to the left of the fairway, but in perfect position for his second shot to the green. 
know Julius Burroughs hit his opening tee shot 265 yards right down the middle and finds himself outdriven by about 10 yards. Julius has about uh, an eight iron left to this number one green. He's hit it up in the air, but he's pulled it a little bit. It's going to hit way down to the front of the green and to the left of the pin and uh, just stopped absolutely dead. Now Miguel Sala, about uh, 275 or 80 yards off the tee. He also has an eight iron. We might mention that it rained pretty heavily during the very early morning hours. The course is uh, a little wet and will uh, play a little long. And it's long enough without being heavy, I'll tell you. Salah has hit a shot that is just covering the flag coming in. How about that for a golf shot? Boy, he had that on the stick all the way. Well, Julius Burroughs apparently didn't have quite enough club in his hand when he hit his approach into this first green. Lost himself way short, about 60 feet. He uses a blade putter, and he will waste no time over this putt. Just trying to lay it dead, but look out. Holy mackerel, he almost put it in the hole. There's a great approach putt. Those putts you don't, you're not thinking about making them. You're just uh, thinking about avoiding three putting, and he darn near knocks it in for a three. And he does knock it in for a good par four here in the first hole. Good par four. Now well, here's Miguel Sala, who's left himself about a 14-footer slightly uphill. It looks as though it would break a little bit from right to left uh, as he looks at it. And take a good look at uh, Sala's putting style. It's very unusual. In his left hand, he holds the putter between his index and second fingers, and he's upright and strives to get that putter head moving uh, as a pendulum would move right along the line, back and through. Pretty good pitch. Ooh, just off the right lip. We almost had two threes, so we'll settle for two fours. Gene, that's quite an approach putt that uh, Burroughs laid dead here. It sure was, but you know, George, all great champions are great approach putters like Jones, Hagen, Sneed, Hogan, all of them. Well, we finished the first hole here. Our match is all even two par fours at the Country Club de Bogota in South America on Shell's Wonderful World of Golf. Here on the second hole, a 506-yard par five contributing to the Country Club's 6,900-yard length. The boss is way short of the pin with a drive and a two iron. Sala with a drive and a four wood is 20 feet below the pin and to the right. Well, for the second hole in a row, Burroughs has left himself a tremendously difficult putt to lay dead. He is 85 feet short of the hole. His ball must go across that camelback, that raised hump in the green. He gave it a pretty good whack, started it out to the right now. The ball is breaking in toward the pin and stops just past pin high. Two and a half feet from the hole, and he has that putt for a birdie four. Beautiful approach putt. Julius Burroughs will mark his ball. He is the third biggest money winner in golf in the post-war era. Uh, putting it conservatively, he has won more than $275,000 in official prize money. Now Miguel Sala has a putt of about 20 feet for an eagle three. Ooh, he babied the putt a little bit and didn't hit it hard enough to keep it on line. So he stops just a foot short. And he will have this tap in for birdie four. And Miguel Sala has birdied the second hole to go one under par. Now Jay with a two and a half or three footer. Just slightly downhill. And this is also for a birdie four. Stayed right on on the left lip, and he just backhanded it in for a par five after two holes. Miguel Sala, who is one under, has a one-stroke lead on Julius Burroughs. A new set of golf clubs? Wouldn't really interest this young Colombian. A new coca? Now, that's more like it. But showing off your skill with this traditional toy is just one of a hundred exciting things to do on Market Day. You can listen to the music of a one-man band. Have the family portrait taken against an exotic background. Visit any of a dozen open-air restaurants for a full-course meal, Colombian style. Or choose a big, juicy piece of some of the world's best beef, roasted and smoked over an open fire. And you'll see everyone you know because they're all here in the plaza on Market Day.
Shell of Columbia helps add to the excitement of this day with a unique drive-in theater. This small Shell bus maintains a year-round schedule, visiting the villages on market and fiesta days. It is complete with projector, sound system, a folding screen, and of course the films themselves, all ready to start as soon as it is dark enough. But no one minds waiting for there's the music and excitement of the traditional dances to help pass the time. comes and the crowd gathers in front of the screen. Often in the more remote villages, these shell films are the only ones the villagers have seen, so they are carefully chosen, not only for the entertainment they provide, but for the information they contain. Information that will help the people in the jobs they do, the lives they live. Education through films is but another facet of Shell's dedication to excellence. And this familiar emblem, on a movie screen in a Colombian village, or at a service station on a Colombian highway, is the symbol of Shell's constant search for new products, new ideas, new ways to serve you better. Here at the Country Club de Bogota on the third hole, a 342-yard par four, you're faced with another slight dog leg to the left. Trees, lateral water, and out of bounds lie on the left side of the fairway all the way to the green. The green is guarded on the right front by a long, narrow bunker and by two more bunkers pin high on the left and right. Trees on a steep fall away are to the rear. Well, Miguel Sala picks up the honor for the first time in the match here in the third tee with his birdie on the second hole. Take a good look at uh, Miguel's grip on the club. His right index finger is way down the shaft in the, a trigger position uh, and he actually has his hands quite separated on the uh, on the club boy it sure works for him Ooh, he's hit a letter perfect tee shot you want to hook the ball a little bit here and uh, that's exactly what he did very close to the edge they're up but missed it and will wind up in the fairway right in front of the green beautiful shot speaking of good grips uh, this fellow puts his hands in the club beautifully his hands are very close together powerful grip Ooh, he caught it a little bit in the heel, I believe, and he has pushed it way, way out to the right, and he is going to put it in the rough, right behind a pine tree. This tree must have been on your mind, because I heard you talking about it on the tee. Uh, yes, Gene, in fact, his friends had marked this tree out to try to avoid it, uh, uh, but uh, this whole dog leg's to, uh, a little to the left, and I kind of caught it right in back of the tree here. I notice you looking under the tree and the side and over the top. How are you going to play this shot? Well, I'm going to try to cut it to the left side of the tree and hope I catch the front end of the green there. Well, good luck to you. Thank you. Well, Julius Burroughs is not going to attempt this recovery shot with a pitching wedge, as you might expect. He's going to use a sand iron that has a little bit more loft, and he is so close to the tree, he must get the ball up almost immediately. If he can put it on that green, it'll be a miraculous shot. Well, he missed the tree and put it right on and right off again. But boy, there's a beautiful shot. Miguel Sala boomed his tee shot here in the third hole, 280 yards. He's dead in front of the green, has a little wedge pitch of about maybe 60 yards. And just a faint breeze behind him now. He'll be really trying to get this close. Is it high lofted shot carrying up toward the pin? And look at that one, huh? Well, Julius Burroughs has a job on his hands to save a four here on the third hole. He's 90 feet from the pin. His uh, second shot just caught that bank and rolled back away from the green. Got a nine iron. He'll try to play a little uh, pitch and run shot with a closed face to give the ball over spin. 
That's exactly the trajectory. Boy, that ball hit and took a big jump. And went way, way past the pin. He's uh, good 25 feet past. Well, Julius Barros has got a very tough putt here to try to save his par. It's downhill about 25 feet. And he said he thought he'd hit it maybe about an inch off the left lip and see what happens. to the hole, so uh, Burroughs is going to mark his ball. And the best he can make now is a bogey five. So before Sala even tries this birdie putt, Burroughs is two strokes behind. And Miguel Sala practicing that very upright pendulum stroke. He has a five-foot putt, and as he looks at the hole, the ball will break from right to left. Salah has this for a birdie three to go two under par. No! no question about that one. I'll tell you, right in the hole for a three. And after three holes, Miguel Salah, who's birdied two in a row, is two under. Now, Julius Burroughs has the same kind of putter he had on the uh, second green, a little downhill putt. And this is four or five. And this one he made. A little side door, but he got it down there. He is one over, and Sala is two under, and now leading by three shots. On the fourth hole, a 371-yard par four, dog-legging slightly to the left. Both players overshot the green with their approaches and made bogey fives. Sala one under, and Burroughs two over. On the fifth hole, a 234-yard par three over a lagoon, Sala hit a four-wood into the wind, which finished 28 feet to the right of the pin. Burroughs has pushed one iron, stopped in rough grass short of the right-hand bunker about 90 feet from the pin. He then wedged up 15 feet from the hole. And Miguel Sala didn't quite get his forward shot pin high. He's about 28 feet away, and there'll be a tremendous break to this putt. You'll be able to see it from right to left as Sala looks at the ball. He missed it on the high side of the hole, which is the side you want to miss it on if you do indeed miss. If you miss it on the low side, the ball has no chance to fall in as it's slowing down. And Salah's going to mark his ball very deliberately. He's not about to hurry. Plane passing overhead. Now Julius Burroughs will try to avoid his third straight bogey. He has about a 15-footer and will have that exact right-to-left break. Misses it on the low side, and that is where you don't ever want to miss a putt. Now, there's a train whistle. This must be transportation day down here. Another bogey for Julius Burroughs. He makes a four, and he now slides three over par to stay one under Miguel Sala. Needs this tricky little two and a half footer. Made a three, stays one under. So uh, now the lead has been increased to four strokes. Gene, you know as well as I that Burroughs normally hits everything from right to left. And the last few holes, things are staying out to the right. What's going on? Well, George, I noticed that, too. His natural shot is right to left. But this time, he's missed three shots to the right because he's not staying down on the ball. He usually stays right down and follows through. In other words, he's coming up off the shot. Coming up off the shot. Well, how can a good player be doing that and not be aware of it? Ah, but that happens to the best of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've now uh, completed five holes here at the Country Club du Bogota. Uh, Salas is one under, but now Burroughs is three over. A, dis a difference of four shots on Shell's wonderful world of golf. On the sixth hole, a 397-yard par four, which plays over a lagoon, Boros made an orthodox par, and Sala, rooted on by his young son and his wife, matched that figure to remain four shots ahead. The seventh hole, a 142-yard par three, is a short one-shotter to a green protected on all four corners by bunkers. Sala went with an eight iron into a 15-mile-per-hour wind. His ball finished dead in line, 15 feet short of the pin. Having had the advantage of watching Sala play first, Burroughs also selected an eight iron.
Jay drew his shot into the green, and he stopped pin high 13 feet to the left. With an uphill putt with which he could be firm, Sala went for his third birdie of the match. He had the break figured perfectly, but failed to give it enough. So Miguel tapped in for a three to remain one under par. Boros was still looking for his first birdie of the match. His putt from 13 feet slid by on the high side. And Burroughs, too, was forced to tap in for a par three to remain three over and four strokes behind. Well, Gene, you've had a chance to watch Miguel now for seven holes. What do you think? Well, he's outdriven uh, Boris on every hole but one. And one of the greatest things about his swing, George, is that left side. It's absolutely straight. In other words, if you let that collapse at impact, you'll lose a lot of power. You're gone. That's my game. <laughs> <laughs> We've finished seven holes near at the Country Club de Bogota. Salas still one under, leading Julius Burroughs by four shots. On the eighth hole, a 530-yard par five, which dogleged sharply to the right, Miguel reached the green in three, while Julius was short and to the right. Burroughs, lying in rough grass, was now faced with a delicate wedge pitch of some 85 feet over the bunker guarding the entrance to the green. He hit a magnificent shot, which finished three and a half feet away, enabling him to match Sala's par and remain three over and four shots behind after eight holes. On the ninth hole, a 463-yard par four, your drive must carry one lagoon and your second shot another. The contoured green of two distinct levels is guarded on the right and in the left rear by bunkers. Playing deliberately short of the second water hazard, Sala hit a two-wood 260 yards through the thin air to the right side of the fairway. Burroughs eased up with his driver and finished 230 yards out, also on the right side. Well, Julius Burroughs was a little bit afraid of that driver in his hand of hitting it too far and carrying it to the water, so uh, he just took an easy, easy swing. Only trouble is now he's left himself a long second shot on this powerful hole. He's got about a three iron in his hand. Starting to the right, hooking in, big bounce, rolling. Oh, boy, almost by the pin. Gorgeous shot. Well, the gallery around this ninth green is really buzzing about that three-iron shot by Jules Burroughs, I'll tell you. That was a honey. Now Miguel Sala hit a two of 260 yards on this hole. And it uh, looks like he's got about a five, maybe a four-iron. Still a pretty good long shot on into the green. And he has hit another shot that is going to hit the front of the green, a big bounce. Almost hit the pin and ran by. Gee whiz, two great shots here in the ninth hole. Well, I'll tell you, watch golf a long time before you'll see a lovelier shot than uh, Julius Burroughs hit into this ninth green. He has marked his ball, which is just five feet from the pin, but in line with Miguel's. So it has about a 23-footer downhill. And it's almost impossible to tell which way that ball is going to break. He gave it a lot of study and said he just thought he'd try to hit it right straight for the hole. I know. Well, he got it right to the lip, and uh, he managed a big smile. Gee, he's a wonderful gentleman in addition to being a good player. Just smiled at himself, and he taps in and finishes the front nine, one under par, 35. Now this is a big putt for Julius Burroughs. And again, this is one that he has looked at and looked at and he just can't make up his mind how he's gonna do it. Oh, Julius Burroughs missed that putt for a three. That darn ball just rolled off the right lip and he taps in and he's gonna finish with a three over par 39 and he trails by four strokes. Well, Miguel, I think together with everybody else, maybe you'd like to hear what Gene had to say about that front nine, huh? Square, what'd you think of it? 
Well, George, I thought Miguel played a wonderful nine holes there, and if he had been putting, he might have been about 32. Yeah. The outstanding part of that nine was those two four wood shots that he played on the par five hole and on the short hole. I thought they were great shots. And, of course, my friend Julius there, after he got by the second hole, I think the altitude got him. He couldn't get the <laughs> ball in the head. Miguel, well, you'd probably be happy just to have another 35 uh, on the back nine, wouldn't you? Yes, I would be happy. Sit down and rest, huh? Yes. Yeah. Jay, uh, with the exception of a little string of bogeys there, about three, four, and five, you played some darn good golf, too. I didn't play too badly, uh, George. I got tangled in the rough about two or three times, and I missed a couple of short putts, and that uh, that was the past 39. Well, if I had to pick out the outstanding shot of the first time, it was a three-iron you hit here at the night. It was a, one of the better shots that I played, but I couldn't get the ball in the hole, though, after I got it on there. Yeah, that's part of the game, too. It sure is. <laughs> well, we have 10, uh, 10 T right over there, fellas, so if you want to go over and get set up, I'll tell the folks a little something about the hole. Okay, right. thank you. This is uh, another one of these long, strong par three holes that they have here at the uh, Country Club de Bogota, 233 yards. And you have to hit your tee shot right across the bend of a stream, which of course constitutes a water hazard. On this hole, Salah hit a one iron 30 feet from the pin and Burroughs' three iron finished 45 feet away. Both two putted for par threes and Miguel maintained his four shot lead. The ideal line on the 11th, a 396-yard par 4, is just to the left of that second fairway bunker, about 270 yards from the tee. Here you play your second shot from a fairway that's only 25 yards wide and dog legs slightly to the left. The two-level green is guarded left and right by bunkers. You know, you hit a golf ball for distance with the big muscles of your body, your legs, your back, and your feet. And, uh... The greatest indicator of good footwork is just to watch a player's knees. Watch his left knee go back at the ball and his right knee come in as he hits. You see that? Beautiful footwork and a beautiful golf shot as a result. A little right to left draw right down the heart of the fairway. Just beautiful. Now uh, watch Jay's knees uh, very carefully. He has a very pronounced action with his right leg. He cocks his knee toward the ball before he starts the club back in the forward press, which is a wonderfully relaxed way to start. And his left knee will go behind the ball on the backswing, where it should be to set up a good pivot. See that? He has hit a perfect tee shot. Now, he's going to be way to the left if he reaches the fairway, but I don't think he did. He tried to carry that rough and finished just in the rough, but he almost hit an absolutely perfect tee shot. Well, both players hit tremendous tee shots on this hole, about 270 yards each, due to the angle of the dog leg. Salah's just a few yards farther from the hole. He has a good full wedge shot. And the breeze is now right to left on this hole, so he'll have to start a shot to the right, let the wind bring it in. He hits it high in the air to the right, hits in the front part of the green, one big bounce. And boy, he has hit it stiff again. He has hit marvelous approach shots all day long. Julius Burroughs uh, had the misfortune to have his tee shot finish in the rough just a couple of feet from the fairway, but. Uh, he had the good fortune of winding up with a good lie. He also has a pitching wedge, and boy, it's a little tough to uh, follow a fine shot like Miguel just hit. He, too, has hit it way high, right in at the pin. And uh, look at that shot, too. Beautiful approach shots on this hole. Well, here on this 11th hole, both players have a real good crack at a birdie. Bruce is nine feet from the hole with a downhill putt. Salo's just four feet away. They both have great approaches in here. Here's Julius Burroughs, one of the best light men in golf. I think everybody in this gallery is pulling for him to make his first birdie. And he did. <laughs> hey, beauty. Right in the hole for a three. So that'll drop Julius now to uh, two over par. Jay, I'll bet you thought you'd never get that first birdie. <laughs> it's kind of a strange feeling, George, to make a birdie. Well, that was a honey that was right in the back of the hole. I hit it right at the left lip, and it stayed there almost all the way down, and then broke right into the cup. And Gal's got a fine putt there for Birdie. Yeah. I wouldn't be a bit surprised if Bird or no, you don't catch him a shot here. Huh? <laughs> I think Miguel, miss, uh, he doesn't miss very many of these things. Very true. And he sure didn't miss that one. Uh-huh. A beauty. Two good threes here at the 11th hole. Now Salah is two under. Throws two over, a difference of four shots. 
The 12th hole at 460 yards is a tremendously long par four with a lagoon 300 yards out. Fearful of reaching the lagoon with a driver, Sala decided to lay up his tee shot with a four wood. He finished safely short of the water, 245 yards out. Boros also resorted to conservative tactics. His choice was a three wood played off the turf. Jay also placed his tee shot in excellent position some 10 yards past Miguel's ball. In the complete absence of wind, Sala chose to play an easy five iron. His ball hit considerably short of the green, but took a big bounce and finally came to a stop pin high some 16 feet to the left of the cup. Boros, 255 yards off the tee, went to a seven iron for his approach. His shot was dead on line, but hit short, kicked left almost 45 degrees, and finished 42 feet away from the pin. Julius again found himself with a long approach putt to lay dead. He had the line, but lacked the firmness and stopped some 18 inches short of the hole from where he tapped in to remain two over. Sala carefully studied the left to right break of his 16 foot birdie putt, hoping to widen his lead over Jay. However, he too was short, almost exactly the same distance as was Burroughs. Miguel maintained his four-stroke lead by tapping in for a par four. The 13th, a 537-yard par five, which dog legs left, was halved in regulation figures. The 14th, a 368-yard par four dog leg to the right, presents one of the tightest tee shots on the course. Once past the fairway bunker, 200 yards out on the right, the narrow fairway is pinched in by water on the left and trees on the right. The green is guarded by a bunker on the right and two more on the left. Sala faded a conservative four wood over the bunker to the right fairway, 230 yards away. Burroughs also laid up, his left to right three wood coming to rest 250 yards out. Sala's wedge stopped 44 feet from the pin. Burroughs's wedge finished 42 feet away. Sala maintained his four stroke lead as both two putted to have the hole. Well, Gene, we saw a great example of uh, tee shot control on the TN14 here, two intentional fades. Yes, I noticed that they both opened their stand slightly and they blocked themselves just as they came into the ball. That's a good way to avoid turning over on the ball. Indeed it is. At the completion of 14 holes now, Miguel Salas still two under par, still leading Julius Burroughs by four shots. The 15th hole, a 174-yard par three, is guarded on the left by a lateral water hazard. On this hole, Sala has pulled his 7-iron 45 feet to the left of the pin, and Burroughs has drawn his 7-iron 28 feet below the pin and to the right. Well, Miguel Sala has left himself for quite a little putt here, a 45-footer uphill, with a good uh, 12 or 14-inch break from left to right as he faces the hole. He started it way left, breaking down toward the hole, and again, Sala had the line figured perfectly, but on longer putts, he seems to have a tendency to leave the ball short. He left that three feet short, and he won't mark it. Now Julius Burroughs, who is 28 feet below the pen, has asked the caddy to pull the flag. And he, too, left it short. Uh, later that, I don't believe even if he'd hit that little harder, he would have gotten it in the hole because the ball was uh, moving to the left offline. So Julius makes his par, remains two over. Julius, that putt looked as though it was breaking off to the left as it came up to the hole. It was breaking to the left, but it was coming back to the right. Uh, George, if I, I think if I hit it harder, it probably would have gone in. Just been a little firmer with it. Huh? I just can't find the right touch on these greens. Uh, I made a comment a moment ago that uh, Miguel on a longer putt seems to be coming up short all the time, too. Well, with his style of putting, he's... Uh, got a pretty firm uh, hold on the club, pretty firm grip. And uh, it's hard for him, I think, to judge the long putts with that type of grip that he's got. And there's the first short one he's missed in the match. 
So Sala is going to bogey the 15th hole here. He is now just one under par and leads by only three strokes. The 16th at 393 yards is a straightaway par four with a deeply contoured green. Tempted by the relatively wide fairway, Burroughs prepared to let out the shaft. In straining for extra distance, he hooked into the roughened trees on the left 265 yards out. With Burroughs off the fairway, Sala was in position to perhaps regain the stroke he dropped at the 15th. However, as though drawn by a magnet, he followed Julius into the rough 275 yards from the tee. With a fairly good lie, Jay decided to carry the short trees with his eight iron. His approach hit on the front portion of the green and rolled to a stop 30 feet past the hole. With his ball sitting up in deep grass, Sala was faced with the possibility of hitting a flyer. He eased up on his eight iron, and he fell just short of the green some 48 feet from the pin. Having to come uphill all the way to the hole, Miguel went with a Texas wedge, his putter. His fine effort finished two and a half feet from the hole. After Sala had marked his ball, Burroughs addressed his approach putt. He rolled up close to the hole and subsequently tapped in for his par four. And Sala was faced with another short pressure putt. As he stroked the ball, a noise in the gallery broke his concentration and he pulled the shot. The resultant bogey put him even par and cut his lead to a scant two strokes. From the cool mountainous climate of Bogota to the tropical Caribbean city of Cartagena is but a matter of hours. But in a sense, it is a journey through centuries. For here are a thousand reminders of the days when the might of the Spanish conquistadores was dominant in the New World. Cartagena is a city of spacious, sunny plazas, where business is an open-air pursuit in the Spanish tradition, and cool, shaded courtyards hidden deep in the center of the old houses, where the pace is quiet and tranquil. It is a city where old balconies and young senoritas look down on narrow streets and a city of churches, ancient but living monuments to the strong religious feeling that is so much a part of the Spanish heritage. And Cartagena is a proud city, proud that its fortress has never been conquered. These mighty walls held off the British and the French. of the guns drove off pirates of every nationality. The serpentine puzzle of the hidden tunnels withstood every attack. And today, Fort San Felipe stands as a symbol of the power that has kept this part of the world forever Spanish in speech, culture, and tradition. But proud though Colombians are of their rich heritage, they do not live in the past. Today, Colombia is emerging as one of the most successfully industrialized nations of Latin America. Modern factories turn out products not only for Colombia's own growing economy, but for export to the world. And Shell is keeping pace with this industrial expansion. The many and varied special lubricants needed to keep modern machines running smoothly, the petrochemicals used by industry, the fuels that supply the necessary power, all are here and all are fashioned to the same standard of excellence for which Shell is known the world over. In Colombia and in your hometown, this is the symbol of excellence, of Shell's constant search for new products, new ideas, new ways to serve you better. Here at the Country Club de Bogota, the 17th at 440 yards is a long and difficult par four which dog legs gently to the left. Well, there's another great tee shot hole, and that attests the golfer's nerve. If you want to have a, an appreciably shorter second shot to the green here, you must stay to the left. Hug that dog leg, and boy, there are trees and rough color over there. And Burrow 
Burroughs pushed his shot a little bit. He'll be uh, in the fairway in no trouble. But uh, way to the right of the angle of the dog, and he will have a long second shot into the green. Miguel Salana with a two-stroke lead and two shots, or rather two holes to play. Let's see how close he comes to the corner. Ooh, he skied the ball, caught it in the toe, hit it way high in the air, hooked it way over deep in the rough and trees to the left. How well, suddenly and dramatically the tide of this match is turning. Two holes ago, Julius Burroughs looked hopelessly out of it. He was four shots behind. Now he's only two shots behind. He's in the middle of the fairway, 250 yards from the tee. Miguel Sala is in big trouble in the trees on the left, and Burroughs will hit a six iron. He hit a low six, trying to run it on the green. It stayed to the right, and he did not get the green. And that could be a big miss for Julius Burroughs. Miguel, I noticed on the last two holes you hooked two drives. Uh, what's happening? I don't know, Gene. Maybe I tried to hit too far. Uh, tell me, you got a pretty bad lie there. Uh, I noticed you looking over that tree. How are you going to play this shot? Well, I tried to make a rear slide with a four wood. Four wood? Yes. Well, good luck to you. If you pull this one off, it'll be some shot. <laughs> Thank you, Gene. Miguel Sala is indeed going to try to fade a forward around this tree. He can't go over and reach the green. He could play safe to the left, but he is going to gamble. And he has cut it out and put it in the bunker. He almost pulled off a phenomenal shot. Well, Miguel Sala played a near miraculous recovery shot into the bunker. He's 50 yards short of the pin. And he now is faced with what I think most pros would agree is the hardest shot in golf, the long explosion. One of two things can happen. You just get it out. You can skull it completely over the green. You can leave it in the bunker. Once in a while, you can get it close. It's tremendously difficult. I can add nothing to that. Julius Burroughs missed this 17th green at a very crucial and critical point. He is short of it and to the right. In fluffy grass, he has a wedge. And he'll try to run it up. He's about 50 feet from the pin. This is a big shot. Julius Burroughs has birdied the 17th hole, chipping it in from 50 feet. What a golf match this is. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Miguel Sala looks as though he has been just uh, run over by a truck, and you cannot blame him. Uh, the expression on his face when that ball went in the hole was something to see. Burroughs has now one shot over par. And unless Miguel Sala can get down this tricky downhill four-foot putt, he will go on over par, and the match will be all square going to the 18th hole. This is a big putt, if a short one. Well, Miguel Sala really looked this putt over, and who can blame him? I'm glad he has to make it instead of me. What a pressure putt, and what a wonderful four. He goes to the 18th tee, still even par with a one-shot lead. Gene, this match kind of takes your breath away. Oh, boy, George, you saw an, a real champion in action, that? Huh? Well, there's one fellow chips in for a three, and the other fellow makes an impossible four. That was an impossible four. Great golf match. And now to the 18th and final tee with Sala at even par, still leading Burroughs by one shot here at the Country Club de Bogota. The finishing hole here at the Bogota Country Club is a rather short par five, 481 yards. At about 220 yards from the tee, the fairway is dog-legged right by a big bunker. Your second shot is narrowed by another bunker on the left, about 45 yards from the green. The large rolling green is guarded on the right by a bunker, and this is quite possibly a birdie hole. Well, I'll tell you, you can cut the tension on this 18th tee with a knife. I have never heard a golf gallery this quiet. This is a hole... Despite the fact that the wind is slightly against it, you can reach with two well-played shots. Here's Jay. And he has hit a big tee shot to the left of the bunker, taking the uh, safe line and not fooling around with those trees on the right. 
good big shot. And now Miguel Sala, who has the added pressure of playing before a large hometown gallery. This gallery is wonderfully fair and appreciative of a good golf, but of course, as you would expect, they have to be pulling for their champion. And Miguel Sala rewards them with a beautiful tee shot on the same line as Burroughs's. But he has hit that ball so far, it has run right through the fairway. The tee shots of Burroughs and Sala are eight feet apart here on the 18th, but Burroughs is just in the fairway. And unfortunately, Miguel Sala is just in the rough. Burroughs is about 220 yards from the home green. He is going to take a two iron and try to bust it all the way home. He has hit a pretty good looking shot and he has carried it on the green. But the right front corner, it's a long putt, but he will be putting for an eagle three. Miguel Sala, though he is in the rough, has quite a fortunate lie. The ball is sitting up in such a manner that he can get a wood club to it. And he is uh, going to hit a four wood. And he, if he wants to hit it at the pin, must carry that fairway bunker 45 yards short on the left. He has hit it way, way high in the air. It hits short of the green, rolls, and will not make the putting surface. Miguel Sala is short in front of the 18th green, 95 feet from the hole. He is going to try to chip and run the ball with a seven iron. And the pressure is on. Remember, $3,000 to the winner, $2,000 to the loser. He hits a chip that is way out to the right, but pin high. And about five feet from the hole. Gee, he had perfect speed. But uh, his direction was a little bit off to the right. Miguel Sala has marked his ball on Julius Burroughs as a 45-foot putt for an eagle three. And he left it three feet short. And that's the first time with a long approach putt that Julius Burroughs hasn't really got it up uh, to the hole. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is it. Both of these players have putts for birdie fours. Remember, one shot separates them. Sala is even par. Burroughs is one over par. In the event of a tie, $2,500 apiece. Sala's caddy continuing to check and advise as he has done all around the golf course. And of course, a player can ask his caddy for advice anytime. If Miguel Sala can make this putt, Burroughs cannot catch him. is over. Miguel Sala has birdied the 18th hole, finishing one under par, 71, and now this putt is window dressing for a birdie four. Julius Burroughs gets it down. Two birdies. Burroughs winds up even par 72. Sala the winner by one shot. Three boys, that was remarkable golf. I want to congratulate you. How does it feel to be Thank you, beat the Open champion? Oh, I never expect to beat the U.S. Open champion. I, I'm really happy now. Jay, what do you think of this uh, McGill's golf? Well, Gene, I've played with uh, Miguel before, and I think he's a great player. He certainly uh, played a, a great round today, except for a couple of little putts out there. It's been a great pleasure playing here at Bogota, Colombia. I hope I can get back here someday and maybe see Miguel back at the Masters. Well, I want to thank you both for a very exciting match. George Rogers? 
Well, Gene, this was certainly kind of a finish that left everybody uh, limp. It's amazing when you realize that uh, Miguel had Julius four shots with four holes to play, then only three shots with three holes to play. Of course, at the 17th, Burroughs chipped it in on him from 50 feet. They came to the 18th tee with Miguel leading by one, and we had two great birdie fours here on the 18th, and you can't finish in better fashion than that. Alvaro, we had to uh, put you to work a couple of times today, deciding who was away. Thank you very much for acting as our You're referee. welcome, George. And Marta, once again, how did they finish officially? Miguel Sala, the winner, one under par, 71. Julius Boris came in second, even par, 72. And our thanks to you for acting as our official scorekeeper. It was a pleasure. Come back and visit us. We'll do that. And now let's join Gene and our two players for some tips on technique. When the average golfer finds his ball in deep grass from 30 yards onto the green, he's at a loss as to how to put his ball on the green and make it stay there. Julius Boris credits his second U.S. Open win largely to the fact that he was able to execute the shot when he needed it. Now here's Jay to show all of you how it's done. The biggest mistake most people make in this situation is to try to contact the ball cleanly. The secret here is to play the shot exactly as you would an explosion shot from sand. First, select a pitching or sand wedge for maximum loft. Secondly, take an open stance to get a slightly outside to in swing. Open the face of the club to get the ball up quickly and keep it open throughout the swing. Now here's the important part. Make sure the club head contacts the grass a couple of inches behind the ball. Getting some grass between the ball and the club face pops the ball into the air with very little spin. You'll find that it will fall on the green quite softly with practically no roll at all. For best results, take a little longer backswing than normal with a little less club head speed through the ball. Many high handicap players lose both distance and direction by hitting their shots fat. That is, hitting the ground behind the ball with their club head. Here's Miguel Salat to show us what causes fat shots and how to correct them. There are several reasons for hitting behind the ball, but two of the most common are allowing the left arm to break in the backswing like this and letting the body sway out over the ball on the downswing as I am doing here. To correct this fault, I will recommend stretch the left arm on the backswing to keep it firm and straight. By all means, get a good turn of the hips going back. Now for the most important part. Start the downswing with the left hip and keep the left arm firm. This will prevent you from swaying into the shot. And you'll find that you hit the ball first and take your David second in the proper manner. To Jay and Miguel, who made the shots, and to everyone connected with the country club to Bogota, who made us feel so very welcome, we'd like to express our thanks. Right, Gene? Right. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being with us today on Shell's wonderful world of golf.